wish to see me? Yes. What can I do for you? Give me back my husband. Oh, give you back your husband? Yes. You're wondering which one he is. Uh, he's a blonde man, not very tall. He wears spectacles. He's a lawyer, your manager's lawyer. Alfred is his first name. Oh, I have met him, yes. I know you have. I implore you, give him back to me. You mustn't mistake my silence for embarrassment. I am at a loss because I don't quite see how I can give you back your husband when I haven't got him to give. You just admitted that you knew him. That scarcely implies that I have taken him from you. Of course I know him. He drew up my last contract. And it seems to me I have seen him once or twice since then. Backstage. A rather nice-spoken fair haired man. Did you say he wore spectacles? Yes. I don't remember him with spectacles. Uh, he probably took them off. He wanted to look his best for you. He's in love with you. He never takes them off when I'm around. He doesn't care how he looks when I'm around. He doesn't love me. I implore you, give him back to me. If you weren't such a very foolish young woman, I should be very angry with you. Wherever did you get the idea that I have taken your husband from you? He sends you flowers all the time. That's not true. It is. It isn't. He never sent me a flower in all his life. Did he tell you he did? No. I found out at the florist. The flowers are sent to your dressing room twice a week and charged to him. That's a lie. <laughs> do you mean to say that I am lying? I mean to say that someone is lying to you. And what about this letter? Letter? <laughs> he wrote it to you. And he says he right here. Let me say. No! I'll read it to you. My darling, shan't be able to call for you at the theater tonight. Urgent business. A thousand apologies. Ten thousand kisses. Alfred. Oh, I found it on his desk this morning. He probably intended to send it to theater by messenger, but he forgot it. And I opened it. <laughs> you mustn't cry. Why mustn't I? You steal my husband and I mustn't cry? Oh. I know how little it means to you. And how easy it is for you. Oh, one night you dress up like a royal princess, and the next you undress like a Greek goddess. You blacken your eyebrows and redden your lips. You wax your lashes and paint your face. You have cosmetics and bright lights to make you seem beautiful. An author's lines to make you seem witty and wise. <laughs> no wonder a poor, simple-minded lawyer falls in love with you. <sighs> what chance have I against you in my own cheap frock, my own lips and brows, my own uh, unstudied ways? <laughs> I don't know how to strut and pose and lure a man. I haven't got Mr. Shakespeare to write beautiful speeches for me. In reality, you may be even more stupid than I am, but I admit that when it comes to alluring men, <sighs> I'm no match for you. This is a very interesting case. What is? Yours. Mine? What do you mean? I mean that I never received a flower or a letter or anything else from your husband. Tell me, haven't you and your husband been getting on rather badly of late? Yes, of course. You used to be very affectionate with each other? Right. Yes. And of late, 
you have been quite cold? Yes. <laughs> of course. A typical case. Oh. My dear, if you knew how often we actresses meet this sort of thing. <laughs> it is perfectly clear that your husband has been playing a little comedy to make you jealous, to revive your interest in him. Uh, do you really think that? Uh, do you mean to say such a thing has happened to you before? <laughs> Endless times. It happens to every actress who is moderately pretty or successful. It is one of the oldest expedients in the world, and we actresses are such conspicuous targets for it. Hmm. There's scarcely a man connected with the theater who hasn't made use of us in this way sometime or another. Authors, composers, scene designers, <laughs> lawyers, orchestra leaders, even the managers themselves. Hmm. To regain a wife or sweetheart's affection, all they need to do is invent a love affair with one of us. <laughs> the wife is always so ready to believe it. Usually we don't know a thing about it, but even when it is brought to our notice, we don't mind so much. At least we have the consolation of knowing we are the means of making many a marriage happy, which might otherwise have ended in a divorce court. But uh, how could I know? <laughs> then, dear, you mustn't apologize. You couldn't have known, of course. It seems so plausible. You fancy your husband in an atmosphere of perpetual temptation, in a backstage world full of beautiful sirens without scruples or morals. One actress, you suppose, is more dangerous than a hundred ordinary women. You hate us and fear us. <laughs> None understands that better than your husband, who is evidently a very cunning lawyer. And so, he plays upon your fear and jealousy to regain the love you deny him. He writes a letter and leaves it behind him on his desk. <laughs> Trust a lawyer never to do that unintentionally. He orders flowers for me by telephone in the morning and probably cancels the order the moment he reaches his office. Oh. By the way, hasn't he a lock of my hair? <laughs> yes. I found it in his desk drawer. I, I brought it with me. Yes. They bribe my hairdresser to steal from me. Oh, it's a wonder I have any hair left at all. <laughs> Is that how he got it? I can't imagine how else. Tell me, hasn't he left any of my love letters lying around? Uh, no. Don't be alarmed. I haven't written him any. Then what I would do? have if he had come to me frankly and said, I say, Sarah, will you do something for me? Me and my wife haven't been getting on of late. Would you write me a passionate love letter that I may leave lying around at home where she may find it? Hmm. I wrote ten like that for a very eminent playwright once. I would have written a letter that would have made you weep into your pillow for a fortnight. Hmm. But that eminent playwright had no such luck with them. <laughs> His wife was such a proper person, she returned them all to him unread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how clever you are. How good. No, I'm neither better nor worse than any other girl in the theater, though you do consider us such monsters. Oh, I have been a perfect fool. Well, you do look a little bit silly standing there with tears in your eyes and your face flushed with happiness because you have discovered that a little blonde man with spectacles loves you after all. My dear, no man deserves to be adored as much as that. But then that's your own affair, isn't it? Yes. Yet I want to give you a parting bit of advice. Don't let him fool you like this again. Oh, he won't. Never fear. No matter what you may find in his pocket, flowers, my handkerchief, my photograph, no matter what flowers he sends or letters he writes or appointments he makes, don't be taken in a second time. You can be sure of that. <laughs> and you won't say anything to him about my coming here, will you? Not a word. 
I'm angry with him for not having come to me frankly for permission to use my name the way he did. <laughs> you are such a dear. <laughs> And I don't know how to thank you. Uh, now, you mustn't begin crying all over again. <laughs> You've made me so happy. All right, Alfred, you can come in now. She has gone.